Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. Let's talk ultrasonics today. Uh, we've had an interesting discussion on uh, Discord about the question of what is Tesla going to do without ultrasonics in terms of parking lots. And so that's why I figured I would go ahead and do this in a parking lot. I'm going to start with, uh, with our car. And by the way, they have already shipped cars without these little pucks all around it. So there's 12 of them on my car, but the new Model Ys do not have that. I think the Model 3s as well. So I'm gonna start with this. So this is approximately where the camera is and can see in front of the vehicle. And it, it's just barely at this line. So it actually worked out conveniently. But if you see that, that's, uh, Oh gosh, you know, a meter and a half, you know, three or four or five feet, somewhere in that range, depending on which uh, measurement unit you work. So you can see that this is a significant range from here to here that the car cannot see in the front. Now, of course, in the back, to use this car as an example, you'd have a rear camera that's a backup camera, but that camera is only a, uh, a it's not a stereoscopic camera. It can only see one uh, with one view. So it's going to have to use some sort of alternative system to stereoscopic view to be able to tell distances. And I want to be clear in this video that I'm asking questions here. I do not know answers. And clearly Tesla believes that they've solved this. And I believe that that's going to come out with 10.69.3 because that was the, when Elon Musk tweeted about the actual smart summon he was almost definitely talking about using Smart Summon without using ultrasonics. So I'm gonna use this other vehicle just as a, a benchmark for it. So if you look here, you can see the curb and you can see that you are much, much closer than you know four or five feet or a meter and a half away from the, the curb. And if this car pulled all the way up to it, it would actually smash its bumper over the curb and that would be a bad thing. So as you pull into a parking space, it is. It would be reasonable to expect that the car could sort of remember how far away it was from the curb, even as it got past the visibility range. And it would also have the pillar cameras on the side, so it would be able to see to some extent on the sides. But it would be it would be problematic. But I could definitely see how you could manage that. In terms of backing up, certainly you could back up with this vehicle. Even if you don't have stereoscopic view, as long as you are moving relative to objects and objects are moving relative to you, you should be able to you know, use some parallax at tricks to be able to figure out exactly how far away things are. And of course, the car is also very good already at recognizing, obviously not this car, but the Tesla. <laughs> that car is very good at recognizing um, objects like human beings and, and just things that it needs to avoid. So it's got an occupancy network. I did a video on that yesterday. I will link it at the end. The occupancy network is critical. And of course the semantics is critical to understand person, uh, potentially, I don't know, there's a shopping cart behind you, things like that, that you need to not hit. So we definitely have that possibility. The question that we're having and the, and the, the solution that I don't know how they're dealing with is, let's say the car is parked. So you've parked your car here and rather than this long curb where the car can actually see the fact that there's a curb here, it's one of those little brief things, right? A little, a little chunk of stuff. So actually maybe, you know, over there, <laughs> you can sort of see, let's see if I can zoom in. Those guys right there, right? So you've got those little curb things and I don't know how many people have done that before, but you know, you, when you get to those, <laughs> I've made the mistake once or twice of getting in the car and not realizing those are there and starting forward and driving right over the curb. So that would be one of the significant gotchas. Another one would be, even though it's relatively low, you could see here if particularly something like a dog or a toddler it, it, you know, it's kind of unusual circumstances, but we're talking about edge cases here. But, you know, if a dog or a toddler was like in this range or, or anything, you know, even a, again, a curb or something like that, that that could have, especially something that's mobile, could have actually gotten there while the car was parked. So, right, so you could say you can memorize it. So if you come up on a curb, you just memorize the fact the car remembers that when you turn it off, that there's a curb there. And so it has to back up first. But what if you're in a situation where something actually arrives there, so it's mobile, so something, again, like an animal or, or somebody just leaves something there in the road, in the parking area, that arrives there while the car is not on. That seems to lead to a situation where, again, pretty unusual circumstance, but that the vehicle could actually end up in a situation where it could try to run over something that's there simply because it literally cannot see it. And so that's where, you know, you can see, sorry about the front of the car, a lot of bugs. 
but there's one there, one there. And so as you drive closer and closer to objects as you're parking, it gives you a range of, of either meters or feet, and it tells, or centimeters or something. Anyway, it tells you how far away you are from those objects. So if you don't have that, again, the camera is up here at the top of the vehicle. Oh, my car just opened up, I guess. Anyway, but it, it literally cannot see below a certain amount of distance. And again, I'm trying to put the camera here, approximately where the camera would be in the car. And that's about as far as you can see. So again, it's a triangle. So, so right at this end over here, you can see all the way down to the ground. But as you get closer and closer to the car, you are up at about this range, which is, you know, let's say mid thigh height. So again, we're talking about something that if it's right in front of the car could be up to, uh, you know, three feet, about a meter off the ground and not be visible to the vehicle at all. And again, under normal circumstances, the car would be able to see this as you're driving. Of course, the car loses visibility at the last second, just like you do as a, as a driver, but you're moving rapidly through the scene. And so there's only fractions of a second before you overtake that. So it's no big deal to be able to compensate and to say, okay, I understand that I, you know, that something is not there. If something's not there, it's almost definitely not going to arrive within a fraction of a second before I overtake that. On the other hand, if it's parked, Again, the car could be sitting here for hours or days or something before you get in. And you might say, well, yeah, human beings can't see over the, over the, the front of the car either. And that's very, very true. But the problem with, with that is that, or the, I guess the good thing for humans is that we can, of course, get out of the car and walk around, or as we approach the car, we can see it. So in general, at least as an experienced driver, what I generally do when I come to a parking lot, like I go to Walmart or something, is I just take a quick you know, glance just to make sure that the vehicle is not someplace where it would, you would be driving over something. Now, another solution, of course, uh, I'm not saying a solution, but a solution to this would be to back up instead of going forward as you began to uh, pull out of a parking lot area. So that is a definite solution. You could just always back up rather than go forward. Uh, even if it's just a couple of inches, you know, you could just back over a couple of feet, I guess. You could back up from here or from where it is there you know, to here and then go like, okay, there's nothing there and then pull forward if you wanted to. Uh, so, you know, if you think about it coming out of a parking lot, if you always, always, always go backwards first, that could be a solution to the problem. I, I guess, uh, well, I mean, consider superchargers. That's a situation where you really can't back up very much because you're already backed up as far as you can go at the charger level. Man, it's really noisy this morning. <laughs> anyway, you're already you're already backed up to the supercharger. So basically, you know, again, just using this as kind of an example, but the supercharger is here and you're backed up to it. You can't go backwards. So you have to pull forwards. So that you know, it just becomes an interesting situation. And again, for us human beings, as we pull out of a supercharger, we've had to walk up, you know, we come from this angle and we get into our car. So we have situational awareness of what's going on. Whereas the vehicle, again, assuming that we're running totally autonomously, the vehicle is could have been off for minutes or hours, so it's not really checking the surroundings. And, you know, you could say at a supercharger, of course, you could leave the, um, you could leave the, uh, the the sensors on, the the sentry mode could be on, but there could be situations where you've got it parked, especially in a, uh, if you have it at home or something along those lines where sentry mode isn't even on. And a lot of people turn sentry mode off at work. And if you're parking in a parking deck at an airport or something for multiple days, you want to turn sentry mode off so it's not draining the battery. So, you know, there's situations where it could be difficult for it to know, have situational awareness of what's going on. Now, of course, when we talk about robo taxis or something, that, that gets rid of a lot of these edge cases because even if the car has to park, it would be on and it would turn around immediately. And the only time it would really be in a situation where it's not paying attention to the world is when it would be charging and sort of off duty. And in that case, you could take steps to compensate for that. So again, you know, super edge cases here. I think backing up is no problem. Even though there's only one camera on the vehicle, it has a very, very good view and it can see what's going on. And again, I think one other clue about this is that Elon Musk said that current vehicles, so like my vehicle, that have ultrasonics is going to leave them on at least for now. And 
you know, I'm gonna hazard a guess that maybe they're using the newer cameras in the newer vehicles that don't have ultrasonics. So they may have better resolution in terms of backup cameras and stuff like that. I don't know that they'll necessarily need that, but if they have the higher resolution cameras in the new vehicles, and you know, Dave Lee was pretty convinced they were gonna announce hardware four at the uh, AI day two, and maybe they're sneaking hardware four into these newer vehicles as well. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. That's super speculation. <clears throat> But if they are, again, more processing power, higher resolution cameras allows the vehicle to be able to, uh, to, to sense the world around it in higher resolution than the current version. I think eventually if it works well, they'll probably roll it out to these older cars as well. But it's not like ultrasonics takes a ton of energy to operate. So there's a good chance that they'll leave it alone for a period of time until they feel like it's just more of a pain in the butt to maintain different code bases and they've got enough data to show that the vehicles are able to handle the ultrasonics. So anyway, like I said, I'm not accusing Tesla of anything. I'm just asking questions that have come up in our Discord conversations and they seem like interesting questions. Again, very much edge cases. You, you, you don't normally have to move forward in a situation where you haven't been there for a very, very long time, but it is an interesting problem because you do have the situational awareness issue. And since they just started with a chainsaw, I'm going to let you all go. So let me know what you think in the comments. I would be, you know, this is an open question. We have no idea what the actual answer is. And so we're, we're interested because clearly feel, clearly Tesla feels like they have a solution or else they wouldn't have done what they've done. So I'd be very, very curious to find out what people think about the potential solution for how the vehicle can move out of a parking space safely without ultrasonic sensors. All right, everybody have a lovely day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.